Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jonathan, and in this video, I'll be doing an update to the cardiopulmonary uh, career field video. So stay tuned, and I'll answer a couple of the questions that I've gotten over the emails. All right, guys, well, welcome back. to this a beautiful day here at Eglin, and I decided to come over and to the beach and just film this uh, with this weather. So one of the questions that I get a lot is uh, how does your typical day look like when you're in phase one? So once you graduate boot camp, you go to uh, Fort Time Houston in uh, San Antonio as well, which is like a 30 minute ride. Uh, so your typical day uh, is Monday through Friday. You have weekends off and holidays. Um, <clears throat> you get up super early in the morning. So m most days you'll be doing uh, cardio Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and uh, strength days will be Tuesday, Thursdays. So you get up early in the morning to work out and uh, you have to be out by like 5 a.m. So you usually get up like at 4.30ish or something like that. Then you go run or you work out, you come back, you get dressed and you're out the door again by like 7 or 8 a.m. Then you march as a flight to your class and you have school from 7 or 8 to like 4 or 5 p.m. They give you lunch break and a couple breaks throughout the day. And in that time, you'll be learning all about our career field. You'll be going over uh, different sections and you'll be taking tests. Uh, this phase is about four and a, four months or so. Uh, give or take a couple days. Then after that, you march back to your room. And after that, pretty much is, is your day. You can do whatever you want. Um, you have to be back in your room like around 10 p.m. for curfew and to do accountability. And that's Monday to Friday. On the weekends, uh, you can do whatever you want. Uh, so you have two phases. ITP is like initial transitioning phase and ATP, advanced transitional phase. So when you're in ITP, you cannot have your car. You have to be in uniform every time you leave the dorms. Um, you have to walk everywhere. You can take a taxi from like the grocery store back to the dorms if you have a lot of stuff but that's about it you can't really do much if you leave base you have to be in uniform you can't even leave base uh, when you're at icp that takes about two weeks after two weeks uh, you can uh, talk to your supervisor at the time which would be like a training leader and if you haven't gotten in trouble and everything is good you get atp which is the advanced one with this one you can leave base you can wear civilian clothes whenever you're off and you can have your car so what i did is like i'm from houston so i just had my friends drive over my car i told my training leader that i was going to have it they took down the information from the car and uh, i was allowed to use my car after i was off and on my free time while you're in school and school hours you cannot drive you have to march everywhere so once your four months are up you pretty much um, get a couple days to get to your next base. So depending on what base you get, um, they can give you from zero days, just like one day pretty much, to uh, five days. So another question that I get is, how does phase two look like? So phase two is approximately eight months or so. And it's, uh, very relaxed compared to phase one you will still be in the dorms and uh, you pretty much just show up to class uh, you're allowed to use your car you pretty much drive to to the hospital where you're gonna be working at and you have a regular work day you have eight hours or 12 hours depending on what shift you're working if you're working a Panama shift you'll be working 12 hour days and pretty much every other weekend is a three-day weekend so one week you will work two days the next week you will work five days of 12-hour shifts if you're working on the clinic side you'll be working monday through friday uh seven to four or, or whatever job schedule that hospital has but that's basically it so 
it's gonna be a lot of OJT. You will be doing a lot of hands-on, seeing patients. You will pretty much go over a section and then you will practice it. This new uh, program, so the, the program got up and stay with you because you're in a dorm, so they will have to get a hotel. And uh, same thing with phase two. They, Phase two uh, is more relaxed. You, you do have a dorm and everything, and they cannot stay with you, so they have to get a hotel. But they can come and visit you, and you have more free time that time. You cannot take any leave, per se. So you can't be like, oh, I'm gonna go on vacation for like a week. But if it's like a holiday or, or something like that, usually students will not work, uh, and you have the ability to take leave and go home or something like that. For Christmas, a lot of the students get uh, two weeks and they can either stay at work or go home and take vacation. So 4th of July, kind of same thing. Any of the big holidays, Thanksgiving, you can take a couple days of leave, go home and come back as long as it's approved by your supervisor. And um, they can come visit you, they'll stay at a hotel. If you have kids or anything like that, uh, if you're married, they cannot be with you in the dorms. Like you can't like bring them and live with you. Um, I think with once you get to phase two, there is a way to live off base if you have like a spouse and everything. Uh, but I'm not very familiar with it since I haven't had kids and I haven't had to deal with anyone that has kids and wanted to live off base. But I think there is a way. So ask your supervisor at that time and uh, they can guide you through a process if there is a process. But for the most part, I haven't seen anyone bring their kids to phase one or phase two. Uh, to live with them or their wife or anything like that. Another question that I guess the living conditions. What kind of living conditions do you get? And I kind of went over this a little bit, but in phase one, you'll have a roommate or you're able to have a roommate. Uh, sometimes you won't have, like I, I, did, I only had one for like the first week that I was there. And then I didn't have another roommate until like the, almost the last week that I left. So almost three and a half months, I did not have a roommate. It just depends on how busy the dorms are and how many students are getting through for phase one. Uh, phase two, for the most part, um, here at this space at least, we give uh, one room per student, so you don't have a roommate. Uh, you share a bathroom, but you have your own room, so you don't have to like sleep with anyone in the same room. You do have to share a bathroom though. Same thing with uh, phase one. You share a bathroom and uh, you sleep in the same room actually. So you have like the room split in half and half of it is his side, half of it is your side. And um, you pretty much share the bathroom and you have your own desk, you have your own bed. It's like a twin size, twin size bed. And uh, that's about it for phase one, phase two. Uh, once you get to phase two, like I said, it's a one room for yourself and then you share a bathroom, depending on what base you go to and how busy they are and you can have your own car you can drive around you can go out of town and uh you can go into the town and like on your off time and everything so you're not very restricted to anything you just have to be back in your room you can't have people sleeping over in your room stuff like that another question that i get a lot is uh what if you're in college or you want to go to college besides uh, the training that you receive and the answer to that is no, <laughs> pretty, pretty much. So while you're in phase one and phase two, your whole job is to learn the cardiopulmonary job. And you do have to have some classes that are required for the program. So in those cases, they will let you take those classes that you need for our job. But you cannot take your own like classes. So let's say if you wanna be an accounting major or something, and you want to start your classes while you're in phase one or phase two, you cannot take any, any classes that are not related to our job. You can do a lot of CLEPs though. So if you have classes that you need for our program for any reason, uh, you can just study and CLEP them. Or if you just want to CLEP a whole bunch of classes, uh, they do let you CLEP in uh, phase two pretty much. So you go and study for a class, uh, it's a little book that they give you, you study on your own time and then you can take a test that took an hour or two and then it's like a pass or fail thing. So you get credit for whatever class you wanted to take. 
but you can actually go to any colleges or take any online courses or anything like that. So do not expect to um, go to college while you're in phase one or phase two. And with that, if you're in college before you join the military, uh, you can't like do classes in boot camp or anything. So if you think you're gonna go to boot camp pretty soon or if you have your date, don't take any classes. Don't sign up for any classes at that time because you will not be allowed to take them. It'll just drop your GPA because you won't be able to attend class. So just worry about the job itself. That's basically what the Air Force is paying you for to learn and be a student of the cardiopulmonary or whatever job you are signing up for. And another question that I get is, um, what options are for, what options of bases do you get for phase two and phase one? So for phase one, it's only uh, Fort Sam Houston. Once you graduate boot camp, you will go straight to Fort Sam Houston and uh, you will do phase one there. For phase two, you have a couple more options so based on what class you are and uh, what rotation of bases they're going through at that time you will probably get one of the following you will get Keesler, Eglin, Langley, Wright Pat, uh, Fort Sam Houston, uh, Travis, and Nellis. It's like six bases, six seven bases um, and that's it so those are the like big military bases uh, you will do your training there, and then once you graduate phase two, for the most part, you will end up at one of those bases as well. Uh, you also have uh, Alaska for, for, once you graduate, you have Alaska, um, Andrews, and that's about it. The, we have uh, other smaller bases, but you cannot go to those for phase two. I mean, once you graduate phase two, because they don't have a very big program in those bases so you cannot do like your OJT out of phase two for that so once you decide to make it a career more bases open up but right out of phase two those are pretty much your base options um, there is no way to pick a base you kind of get what you get you can trade with other students so let's say uh, another student gets a base that you want and they don't want it or they're okay with trading you can submit some paperwork and if, they, if it gets approved you get their base but you cannot just decide what base you want to go to if you have kids or family or anything like that there's no way to tell you what base you're going to end up at it's just whatever the air force gets you unless you're a reserve and guard because you already know what base you're going to be working at so you go back to that base Another really uh, common question that I get is uh, if you're in debt and you've been waiting for a while for the job to pop up at your recruiter and uh, you guys are telling, asking me uh, how long the wait list is or, or how long does it usually take, there is no way to tell you that. Um, that basically comes from uh, headquarters up in uh, AFPC, uh, which is uh, kind of like the, the job distribution where they see how many uh, jobs they need and everything and then it gets sent out to the recruiters but there is no way to tell you that it takes a year or it takes like a month it just kind of luck of the draw and you just kind of have to wait for it the only way to know that you're uh, a guaranteed job for this job will be going to reserve or guard because that unit can tell you how many openings they have for that specific job at that base and they can kind of tell you when you will be going to boot camp and everything. So if you want to be for sure and like know exactly how much time it will take you, guard and reserve are kind of the way to go. But if you come in active duty, there is no way to tell you like how long the wait list is or how many openings we have or anything like that. It just kind of, uh, it is where it is type of thing. I was lucky and um, I went to MAPS and as soon as I came back from MAPS and did my job sheet and everything, uh, I was offered this job. So I didn't wait anything. I knew that day that I was gonna get this job and then I just kinda waited for my ship date. But uh, some people have waited a year, some people have waited six months. Uh, it's, just, it's just random. Another question is, um, let's say you already got the job, you have a ship date and everything and 
you want to you want to know what to study or how to prepare for this job well um, it's very fast paced in phase one and it will give you all the information you need there but let's say you have no medical background or anything at all you can just study some anatomy and physiology uh, learn about the lungs and the heart how they interact um, learn like the basics there's you don't have to go into like detail and everything because like I said phase one will give you everything you need they'll uh, give you lessons and everything so just be uh, ready to study a lot in phase one if you have any if you're struggling or anything ask for help don't just uh, think you're alone uh, ask your fellow students or ask an instructor to like give you more uh, lecture on a specific topic that you have problems with but cardiopulmonary deals with the heart and the lungs and uh, everything that goes along with it so um, Khan Academy on uh, YouTube has a lot of uh, ventilation and uh, respiratory videos so you can learn some stuff from there they get really uh, detailed sometimes so like I said you don't have to like learn everything there but if you want to get a head start and just start learning some uh, vocabulary like medical vocabulary and uh, how what things are called uh, in the heart you know like the chambers the blood flow um, so the circulatory system the respiratory system the anatomy of the lungs the anatomy of the heart um, that will kind of give you a good idea also EKG uh, rhythms so like sinus rhythm bradycardia tachycardia uh, VTAC AFib um, anything uh, like that that's a good thing to do too you can learn uh, some of the drugs uh, epinephrine atropine dopamine um, some of the emergency drugs like uh, for the BLS and how to do like CPR stuff like that you know like those drugs are the ones that we use a lot um, that's about it I mean you can't really prepare for it too much because you'll just drive yourself crazy so just uh, learn the basics if you want and then learn everything else in phase one all right guys another question that I get a lot is uh, what kind of requirements we have for this job uh, so you need some college so you don't need to have a degree in anything specific so if you're a nurse already or if, if you're already studying accounting or if you're studying uh, mechanics or anything like that you can apply for this job as long as you have English math social studies fine arts humanities uh, all those core classes that are for every degree I had an aviation management degree associate's degree before I joined and that got me in so I had a lot of like management classes and everything but I had all those prerequisite classes you don't need to have any science or specific um, classes for for this job just those core classes okay so uh, you can always talk to your recruiter and they can guide you through the process and I'm sure they can pull up and see what classes you're missing or something like that because everything gets sent up to uh, the schoolhouse and they approve or deny your your application whenever you qualify for this job so if you think you're missing classes or anything like that uh, just ask your recruiter and they can guide you through the process all right guys well that pretty much concludes the video um, if you have any other questions uh, shoot me an email um, I also have a Instagram going now so check the Instagram link below and uh, comment like subscribe and like I say, if you have anything else, shoot me an email and uh, I'll find the answer for you if I don't know it. And it could be anything Air Force related or cardiopulmonary related. And uh, I'll see you guys soon.